Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about last night's game between the Utah Jazz and the Detroit Pistons. However, before I get too far into it, I would like to remind you all to leave a like and subscribe. I've been appreciating all the support that I've been receiving lately, and I hope to see that continue. Now, without further ado, let's talk about the game. Uh, the J Utah Jazz are my favorite team in the Western Conference. Going back to Donovan Mitchell's rookie season, I really fell in love with his game and he immediately became one of my favorite players in the league. I have so many great memories of that Jazz series against the Thunder and honestly ever since that series the Jazz have become the team that I have some rooting interest in in the Western Conference. I'm a Milwaukee Bucks fan primarily but if I'm rooting for Western Conference team it's going to be the Jazz. And so I was quite excited to catch their game today as I had not yet seen them play. But I was a little underwhelmed by what I saw. I thought that this Jazz team had a chance to be terrific offensively and they were that in the first quarter. All of the threes were going in, Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley both got off to terrific starts and were really uh, taking this team to a great first quarter where they put up uh, around 35 points, I believe. And after that, it really slowed down quite a bit. Once Conley and Mitchell, or I guess once Mitchell came off the court at the end of the first quarter, took a little breather, uh, the Jazz offense really started to struggle, and we saw the Pistons kind of work their way back into the game. The lead stayed between like 10 and 15 points, for a large portion of the later second quarter and pretty much the entire third quarter. But in the fourth quarter, the Pistons really started to make a run, and with like five minutes left, I think they cut the lead down to as close as five points. The Jazz were able to close it off and get the win, but this is a team that they should have, especially considering they didn't have Derrick Rose, beaten by quite a bit more than the ten points that they did. And so in this video, I'm mostly just going to be spotlighting what I think this Jazz team needs in order to play better. Before we do that, though, I think it's okay to point out some of the positives for them. Donovan Mitchell looked really good as a scorer for stretches in this game as he piled up 28 points on 9 for 18 shooting, 4 for 8 from 3, and 6 for 7 from the line. He was scoring at all three levels, getting to the basket, shot 7 free throws, and had uh, a couple finishes at the rim. He knocked down multiple floaters in the game, and that's a, an area of his personal game that I think he's improved in greatly ever since that rookie season, and that's really where we've seen the most growth in him and how he's grown into being an all-star level player from just being, you know, a rookie of the year contender, which is a pretty big jump. And it's because of his in-between games development. He was already a great finisher, and his three-point shot hasn't gotten all that much better, although it, it has gone in at the same rate on more attempts per game and more difficult attempts as he's shooting more off the dribble looks now. But the biggest improvement in his game over the last few years has been with that floater, and today we saw him use it to good effect. Outside of that, though, in the scoring, his playmaking wasn't too incredible. There were a couple passes where I was impressed, but it was nothing jaw-dropping, and he uh, wasn't able to put up too high of an assist number. He also wasn't completely egregious when it came to turnovers, as he didn't commit his first turnover until the beginning of the second half, but he did turn the ball over four times in that half, and a few of them were just kind of careless with the ball stuff, where uh, the opposing defender was able to poke it away, whether that was Sadiq Bay or Jeremy Grant. Uh, and the other thing with Donovan today was that I thought that he kind of disappeared for large portions, especially down the stretch in the fourth quarter. It felt like there were a lot of possessions where he was just standing in the corner and someone like Jordan Clarkson or Mike Conley was initiating the offense. And that's the time of the game where Donovan needs to take over. And we saw him do that a bit more during the Jazz first round series against the Denver Nuggets last year in the playoffs. But... That needs to translate over to the regular season, and we need to see him do it more consistently. If he can do that, this guy's a legitimate All-NBA player, and I look for him to continue to 
make improvements in his consistency, and if he can, we could see him take another big jump this season. Mike Conley was also pretty good tonight, putting up 15 points in the first half, finished with 22 and 6 assists on 8 for 13 shooting, 2 for 4 from 3. Conley has had a bit of a comeback season so far after really struggling last year where he suffered an injury and obviously missed a lot of time. I think it was a quad injury, although it might have been a hamstring, just like an upper leg is what I specifically remember. But Conley has looked really good so far this season, both as a spot-up shooter and as a pick-and-roll initiator. It seems that he has established a pretty good chemistry with Rudy Gobert now in their second season, and that's going to be something that the Jazz can count on quite a bit. By that, I mean the pick-and-roll between Conley and Gobert. Uh, he looks like a really good secondary option for this team after Donovan Mitchell, and he looks like the player that they thought they were trading for when he came over from Memphis. So that is certainly a good sign for the Jazz. Jordan Clarkson also scored the ball at a high level tonight, finishing with 18 points on 7 for 15 shooting and 3 for 7 from the three-point line. Clarkson is going to give you what he gives you. Pretty solid scoring off the bench, not terrific efficiency, but not horrible efficiency, and basically just someone who can play with the ball in his hands when your primary offensive options are off the court. You know, you're not counting on all that much more from Clarkson. The guy that I really think needs to step up on the offensive end of the floor in order for this Jazz team to really reach their full potential as a sneaky championship contender has got to be Bojan Bogdanovic. Last year, Bogdanovic was a 20-point scorer for this team, and this season he's really taken a step back. Like I said, this was the first time that I've seen the Jazz play, but I've heard uh, separate sources discussing this team, and a lot of what I've heard kind of stood out to me. It just felt like his shots weren't going in, and he was kind of putting his head down and not uh, keeping the same confidence, and every time he put a shot up, it just felt like it wasn't going to go in. He finished with 7 points on 3 for 11 shooting and 0 for 5 from 3. He's going to have to clean it up and yeah, find that same consistency he had last year when, like I said, he was a 20-point scorer on really good efficiency and a terrific secondary option for this team behind Donovan Mitchell. He has to find that same form as a scorer because he's obviously not exactly a plus defender, and the combination of that along with him being a bit of a lackluster guy on offense has really taken away from how effective he can be. Uh, Gobert uh, had a pretty good night defensively, but offensively he was really limited in what he was able to do, finishing uh, with just four points on one for five shooting, two for six from the free throw line, which is an area he has to improve. But what really stood out to me as potentially being a bit troublesome was the turnovers as he finished with four of them. He has to have better control of the ball and be more careful when smaller players come swiping through and trying to take the ball away from him. And he uh, was a bit careless tonight than you would like to see. Uh, so with that and the free throws, he's got some improvements he has to make on the offensive end. I've always complained about his hands not being the best, and it seems like he drops so many passes. So there's another thing he could work on. On the defensive end, though, he was terrific as always. Always has been an elite rim protector, the best rim protector in the league over the past few seasons, and that has continued Today he had 4 blocks and 19 rebounds and was really just a key cog for this Pistons team, or excuse me, the Jazz team, as it felt like whenever he left the game, the Pistons went on a run. Uh, this happened at the end of the first quarter and at the end of the third quarter. So Rudy Gobert is really important to this team and he provides them with just such a steady anchor at the big man position. Definitely a guy who's become a bit underrated in my opinion and still makes this team very, very good because of his defensive capabilities. The starting lineup here for the Jazz is really, really strong. You have the two pillars in Mitchell and Gobert. Mitchell, who carries the offense, and Gobert, who carries the defense. And then you have three really strong supporting players in Conley, 
Royce O'Neal and Bogdanovich as O'Neal brings some of that 3 and D stuff, although I would like to see him take a bit more uh, threes. He seems to be a bit more hesitant on in terms of the shooting than he was in past seasons, so definitely something you could look for some improvement in from Royce O'Neal. Bogdanovich needs to hit his shots more, and well, Conley's been playing terrific, so just continued strong play from him can make this team really, really good, as that starting five is just ridiculously strong, and off the bench, they still have some pretty solid depth, even though uh, they did lose some players that were giving them end-of-the-bench minutes last year, like Emmanuel Moutier and Tony Bradley. But what I saw tonight from Clarkson was terrific. Joe Ingles is always going to be a strong player as a pick-and-roll initiator who's a great passer and a knockdown shooter. You have George Niang, who can space the floor and play good defense for you. And you have Derek Favors, who is basically Rudy Gobert light as someone who can protect the rim, grab rebounds, set strong screens, and run to the rim. He's perhaps the best backup center in the league. And although that isn't the most valuable player you can have, he still is going to make this bench unit better and allow them to win a lot of minutes against opposing teams. So I think that this Jazz team is really strong through nine players. They're probably as good as any other team in the league. And I just hope that they can figure out some of the little things, because if they do, I genuinely think that this team can challenge the Clippers and the Lakers to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference. At this point, I think they're probably right around the third best team, as I've seen Portland quite a bit, and I was haven't been overly impressed. I've seen Golden State, and although Curry and Draymond are great, I have questions about the rest of their roster, although the bench is sneaky good for the Warriors. I think that that's been a bit underrated thus far through the season. Uh... The Mavericks haven't blown me away. We'll see what happens when Kristaps comes back. Jamal Murray needs to be better for the Nuggets to be up in that conversation. Uh, the Suns are really, really good, but they just blew a huge lead to this Pistons team. Although, if Mikhail Bridges' jump is real, watch out. That team it can be really good. So I think that Utah is right there with teams like Phoenix and Dallas and Denver to be the third best team in the West. And at this point... I'd say they're probably either the third or fourth with room to move up there. In terms of trades that could happen, I think that this could be a really interesting DeMar DeRozan team, as although that would really hurt the defense, just having one more really strong offensive weapon would help this team out quite a bit. I'm not sure how you make the salaries work there, but if that could happen somehow... Definitely something that I would think about if I were the Jazz. But mostly, I think that this is going to be what this team looks like through the season. And I hope that they're able to really click at the high level they're capable of, because this team has a chance to be really good. For the Pistons side of things, I've talked about this team quite a bit, as they just played a two-game back-to-back against the Bucks, who I pretty much make a video on every time they play, because... Like I said earlier, that's my favorite team. But, I mean, Jeremy Grant has just been so impressive so far this season. I was a pretty big hater of this move. I said that there was too much money, it didn't make sense for their team, and this is just not going to work when the Pistons sign Jeremy Grant. And I've been wrong. Jeremy has been a terrific primary offensive scoring option for this team. As they put up a, a stat today, he's averaging like 24 points per game, and he's shooting the ball efficiently. Tonight, he had another really good game where he had 28 points on 9 for 19 shooting, 3 for 6 from 3, and 7 for 8 from the line. He's doing a lot of that, creating shots for himself as he's been able to get to the rim. He can fight through contact and finish, and he gets to the line a lot. And he's been shooting the ball really well from long range so far this season. I was wrong about this, and if Jeremy Grant continues on this trajectory, I think he has to be the favorite for most improved player, and someone that could genuinely make a case to be an all-star this season. Outside of him, though, 
this team is going to be really offensively challenged, especially when Derrick Rose is out as he was tonight. They were only able to muster 86 points against a Utah team that is good but not great defensively. Blake Griffin had an okay day finishing with 10, 6, and 5 on 4 for 12 shooting. Sadiq Bey was fine with 12 points on 3 for 9 shooting. Uh, but really, those are the only two players aside from Jeremy Grant that were even in double figures scoring today. And they're going to have to find some other option as a scorer. The clear guy here would be Blake Griffin as outside of Jeremy Grant. There's no other real strong on-the-ball scorer here, uh, assuming Derrick Rose is going to be out. I'm not really sure on that injury. I think it's to his knee. If he's back soon, that's a really good sign for the Pistons. But if he's out for a longer amount of time, well, that could be a little bit of a problem. But while he is out... Blake Griffin is probably the second best ball in hand scorer here as although Sadiq Bey has had a great start to the season, he's not so much of an on-ball player as more of a spot-up off-the-ball shooter who can attack closeouts a little bit. So Blake Griffin is going to have to play better for this Pistons team to make a run at the playing game, which if Jeremy Grant is playing this good, they really should be at least close to being in that group of teams competing for the play-in. Not too much to say here about the Pistons, like I said before, other than, yeah, Jeremy Grant has a chance to make this team quite good, and I'm excited to see his continued evolution as this season goes on. Let me know what you thought of this game tonight in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.